every person who is charged with a criminal offense is entitled to defend himself in person or by a legal practitioner of his own choice. Remember that an individual is entitled to remain silent. Every citizen in Nigeria is entitled to maintain a private life. You are approaching a military checkpoint or a police checkpoint without knowing that it's against or it offends them and subject you to a frog jump. That is wrong. Hello everyone and welcome to another fresh episode of the program Justify Nigeria on ACNN Television reaching from Abuja. On today's episode of the program we are going to be looking at legal view on NSAS protest. My name is Amos Zichinomso. It is a common knowledge that the work of security agencies anywhere in the world is to protect lives of citizens and their properties. The mere fact that the Nigerian police force is one of the security agencies we have in Nigeria make them to be in the forefront of not only protecting the lives and properties of citizens, but also keep and uphold the letters of the Constitution. However, this assertion seems not to be true towards Nigerian police because of the rate of brutality a particular unit called Special anti robbery Squad, popularly known as SAS, has been inflicted on innocent Nigerian citizens. This brutality and extrajudicial killings by officers of SARS have become rampant and dehumanizing. The Nigerian youth trooped out into the streets to say enough is enough with the slogan hashtag NSARS. The protest of Nigerian youth become very tense and irresistible, which made the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, to disband SARS. Despite and in spite of all the federal government has done, to ensure the quitting of the protests, yet the Nigerian youths refuse to quit. What may be the cause of this? Is the actions of Nigerian youths justified and constitutional? What do you think that may be the way out and the way forward? With me in the studio to address all these issues and questions is Barrister Kelechi Mokogo, a legal practitioner, legal consultant of National Assembly here in Abuja. You are welcome to the program, Thanks sir. for having me, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Sir, you have seen it all. Please, what is protest and what may cause protest in a nation? Let's start by that. All right. Thank you. Um, once again, I want to thank you for having me again here in your studio. You're welcome. Uh, as we all know, protest can be said to be a statement or an action that is... Uh, disapproval that is not in agreement with uh, either a policy or directive of a government or an action or statement or even statement of a government official. So any statement or action of an individual or group of persons okay. that is in disapproval, that is not in agreement uh, with either the policy or directives or whatever issue it may be, of a government, of an institution, can be said to be a protest. Okay, that's what simply what it means. Well, that's, that's Provided it's not with accordance of the government or the directives. Yes. It's coming from an individual groups of in individuals. Individuals. Of that's course, just that's what, protest. what protest is all about. Yeah. Then what do you think that may cause protest in a nation? Um, like I've said, uh, it is, uh, protest is an aftermath of a decision, a product. Okay. of a decision or a policy of government. Okay, maybe something that government is doing that the people, they are not comfortable they are, with. They are not comfortable with. So once the government comes up with an idea or once the government comes up with a proposal or a policy that is not in agreement with the aspirations of the people, mm -hmm. uh, the only way they can ventilate their minds, the only way they can um, show disapproval, such disapproval, is to engage in a peaceful protest. protest. So it, it is also important to, to, to differentiate a protest from a riot okay. for clarity purposes. Please, yes. For, please. for clarity Let, purposes. Let's get that. What's the yeah. difference? That, that, there is a difference between a peaceful protest and a riot. Okay. Now, where there is a protest and it is peaceful, what it means is that such protest is organized, okay. such, such protest is coordinated, uh, there is no violence, 
uh, there is no loss of life and properties okay. of people and individuals. Uh, such protest is conducted in a manner that is within the ambits of the law. Okay. So when such such ingredients or such features are, are, are visible for anyone to see, that means that such is a protest and not a riot. In the case of a riot, uh, you, you, you witness cases of you know, loss of lives, properties, uh, and of course uh, uh, protesters coming out with uh, various forms of uh, uh, weapons to because cause uh, pandemic, yes, and, and all, all that. that. Yeah, so, so, but uh, that is basically, you know, the the Different, underlining the, difference the, between, between a riot and, and a protest. Uh, pro protest is something is peaceful, it's peaceful, just to show your grievance, but in a peaceful in manner, a peaceful without manner. hurting anybody. But anything short of mm. that, we have bloodshed, mm. machete, and weapon mm. is riot. The, 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 okay, thank you very much. That's thank you riot. so much. Now. now uh, one of my friends uh, called me, he said that Nigeria is in tumor. Uh -huh. Now, uh, the protests of Nigerian youths, as we are now, is it constitutional? Is it justified? I mean, normally, protests, is it a constitutional right? Um, protests, peaceful protests. Yes. Uh, peaceful protests is, uh, is fundamental to, to even the sustenance of our democracy. Okay. Expansion, sir. Peaceful protest is fundamental to the tenets of our democracy and the sustenance of our democracy. Uh, it is an appendage, it can be said to be an appendage to the fundamental right to expression and that of press, and also uh, the fundamental right to peaceful assembly yeah. and association of uh, persons. So, where these fundamental rights of uh, expression and of press and of course uh, fundamental rights to peaceful assembly and association as uh, encapsulated under section 39 okay. and 40 of uh, the 1999 constitution okay. so where 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 there is an infringement on the right to peaceful protest okay. it's also false it is also of adverse effect on the fundamental rights as guaranteed and provided by the Constitution of the Federal Republic so of Nigeria. So, simply put, is 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 the is the you is the right of the Nigerian youth it's, what they it, are doing? It's it's the right. It's their basic right. It's okay. fundamental to 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 whatever we are doing, to whatever we are building as a nation. People must, at all times, be allowed to express whatever grievances and also to okay. ventilate and mold opinions. It is the contemplation of our Constitution. It is a vested fundamental right of persons, okay. and. Uh, I think uh, it, will be, it will only be right for government and uh, leaders, people in authority to uh, try as much as possible you know, to protect and give life to these uh, fundamental rights as enshrined in the Constitution. Okay, um, Femi Falana, a senior advocate of Nigeria, said that yes. um, the fact that protesters should be given security to secure them as they are protesting, do you agree with that? The, yeah, of course, of course. It is it is the duty of giving them the say yes, it, the it, duty it, of the it, state it is, it is to the provide duty, security yeah, for yeah, them. It is the duty of the state. It is the duty of the state. The the primary objective of setting up every government is to protect lives and property. That's the primary purpose. That's the primary objective so of based every, on that ambit, they yes. should pro so you agree with they should provide. I, I, I agree. I agree. It is it should be the duty. It should be the responsi the constitutional responsibility of. Uh, the federal government through the inspector general of police and all that security agencies to provide security for those protesters okay. for the NSAS protesters and it's also for it is also right uh, 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 for 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 the security operatives of the country to to also be able to differentiate between those who are protesting and those who are causing anarchy or causing riots in the system, in the, the country. System, because it could be hijacked. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 this is because, uh, for me, I believe, uh, like I've said, it is the right, it is the responsibility of the government to, to, to protect lives and property. Uh, for those who have been protesting, uh, using this as a uh, uh, protesters as a case study yeah. uh, you, you agree with me and every other person who you know, have been following developments and the happenstances in this country especially with respect to uh, this uh, uh, ongoing protest, protest by by Nigerian youth so you will find out that uh, they've conducted themselves in a very peaceful manner yes. the uh, Nigerian youths have uh, they have shown they've shown relentlessness they've shown they've shown courage they've shown that uh, at a time like this they can come together and unite and speak in one 
voice and uh, also ask uh, the government to do the right thing. Right. When you look at uh, their, their demands, you find out that uh, all they are asking is just for the betterment of this country. Okay. Please, we, we're going to go on a short break now, but when we return, you are going to be telling us the reason why even the federal government have tried to see that they meet their demands, yet Nigerian youths are still on the streets. Right. This and many more will be hearing from Barrister Kelechi when we come back. Do join us again. Thank okay. you. Hi, you are welcome to the speaker on ACNN television, reaching you from Abuja. My name is Anozi Chinomso. Police is defined as an organized body or arm of government with civil officers in a city, town, district, or state saddled with the responsibility of protecting the rights, lives, and properties of the people and further maintain peace and order in the society. Part 2, Provision 4 of the Police Act states that the police shall be employed for the prevention and detention of crime, the apprehension of offenders, the preservation of law and order, protection of life and property, and the due enforcement of all laws and regulations of which they are directly charged and shall perform such military duties within or outside Nigeria as may be required of them or under the authority of this or any other act. From the above definitions, one thing is both sacrosanct and vivid, that the primary duty of the police is to protect the lives and properties of the citizens and maintain peace, law and order. But in a situation where police brutalize, dehumanize, and kill the people they are meant to protect, have left one to wonder on whether the Nigerian police force is policing or poor killing. Over the years, the extrajudicial killings of a particular unit of the Nigerian police called Special Anti-Robbery Squad, popularly known as SARS, has become so alarming that the attention of the world has been drawn to it. These police officers harass innocent citizens without any just cause. It has been alleged that these officers of SARS go as far as killing people and telling the victims' relations. Nothing will happen. For instance, a 20-year-old young man by name Chijoke Iloanya John was allegedly murdered in 2013 by retired CSP James Wafo and his men in Okozo in Anambra State after rejecting 3 million naira from his parents. What a wicked world. Just recently, one treasure Doka narrated how she was beaten mercilessly and dehumanized by more than 10 policemen for doing absolutely nothing. Mrs. Ngozi Iluamozo lost her husband to SARS. A 17-year-old girl by name Tina Ezekwe was gone down by policemen just for standing in a bus stop. Golade Johnson was killed in a football watching center. Tamiyu Kazim was a young football rising star that was pushed out of moving SARS vehicle. Ayomi De Taiwo was killed because he refused to give a 50 naira bribe to police officers. A 28-year-old graduate of Institute of Management and Technology, Enugu, by name Informa Abugu, was raped and murdered in police detention few weeks to her wedding. The question I'm asking in all this is where are the police not bringing the perpetrators of this crime to book so that the souls of the victims will rest in peace and their relation in turn get justice. Rather the police and indeed other security agencies will fold their arms and do absolutely nothing. Little wonder these officers keep on saying, nothing will happen even if I shoot you. And indeed, nothing happens. It was based on these atrocities and man's humanity to fellow man, perpetrated by SARS officers, that Nigerian youth all over the world said, enough 
is enough and trooped out of the streets on protest with the slogan, hashtag and SARS. Based on this protest by the Nigerian youths, the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, disbanded SARS and replaced it with SWAT. <laughs> what a super story. What a joke and what a shame. Is there any difference between SARS and SWAT? Anybody who believes that there is a difference between the two will not only be deceiving himself or herself, but also be swimming in the ocean of illusion. Maybe we need to remind Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adamu, that bed of a feather will always flock together. We need to remind him that a person that sold his dog and bought monkey still has squatted animal in his house. We need to remind him that the problem at hand will not be solved by merely changing of the name and nomenclature of SAS to SWAT. I therefore speak that until the government of Nigeria rise up to reform, overhaul, totally sanitize the entire system of Nigerian police, and bring the perpetrators of these extrajudicial killings to justice, compensate the victims' families, meet the demands of these protesters, and finally restore confidence of police, not only to Nigerian youths, but indeed all Nigerians. Our country will continue to produce police officers who will not be policing, but poor killing innocent citizens of Nigeria. My name is Anna Zechinobso. I just want to speak. Hello, thanks for staying tuned and to know that we are still there. We are still in the studio with uh, Barrister Kelechi Wokogu. Before we went for break, I yeah. was about asking you, uh, looking at the demands of these Nigerian youths. They have made some demands. And the federal government said uh, they have done something and they are still doing. First of all, they have disbanded SARS. Mm. But they still say they are on top of the situation. Mm. But the Nigerian youth says no. What do you think uh, would be the cause of that? Because uh, the federal government said they're on top of the situation, and of course they have this ban SAS yeah. and all that. The other, so what do? Why is are they? Is it more on this? Well, well, I, I think uh, I think uh, the problem uh, or the reason why Nigerian youths uh, are not giving in yet is because of uh, what I will, what I would describe as. Uh, uh, Unfulfilled promises okay. made over the years. Over, okay. Accrued, accrued unfulfilled, unfulfilled <laughs> promises. That's the word. Okay. Accrued unfulfilled promises okay. made over the years by our leaders and our politicians, our Nigerian politicians. Uh, there, is, there, is, there is this trust issue between Nigerian citizens, not just the youths. But Nigerians I agree. and their leaders, uh, we've, 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 we've come to that point where uh, Nigerians, and I want to say that uh, what is actually happening is not, nobody is trying to overthrow the government of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. That, 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 that point must be made straight. No, yes. no, nobody, nobody, nobody is trying to overthrow the government of President Muhammad Buhari. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, what the youths, uh, are trying to do or have done so far is uh, is a signal. It's uh, is uh, is an expression of uh, of uh, disapproval. Uh, is an expression of uh, uh, discontentment and uh, 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 tiredness of uh, unfulfilled promises made uh, by leaders of this years. We've been in a country where. Uh, if a president wants to contest an election, for instance, mm. uh, you come to the people and tell them that you're going to make Every, this work. Would, uh, this you, one. Yeah, you're going, you going to provide uh, uh, a good health care system. You are going to make education accessible. Uh, you can make it, uh, uh, make it also uh, uh, qualitative. You do this, you do that. And at the end, uh, none of these promises come to light. Yes. So Nigerians are tired. We want to see our leaders take steps, take practical steps towards solving our problems. Okay. Okay. Nigerian youths want the country leaders, the Nigerian leaders, the president, Muhammadu Buhari, to take practical steps.
What is your take on the issue of a military trying to shoot innocent citizens? Uh, Despite that uh, brutal, the chief of army had denied that they are not aware. The Lagos state government, uh, made, uh, led by the governor, have made a broadcast that <laughs> Lagos state is beyond there. What is your take on yeah, that? Uh, oh, oh, I've I've said I've said in several places that. Uh, we have to thank God for social media. We have to thank God for technology. Uh, it's now easier for for dissemination of information and to know the truth. And to know the truth, it comes up. It exposes, you know, what ordinarily could be done in the hidden. Uh, ordinarily, uh, if we had not seen videos, if we would not seen pictures of uh, life. Uh, 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 attack on uh, the peaceful protesters, ENSAS protesters at Lekito Gate uh, uh, by the Nigerian army would have been wondering, you know, where this news, where, where the news is coming from. But these are things happening in the country. And for the for the for the chief of army staff to come and say that uh, uh, the, the army, is, the, not the army is not aware that uh, whatever that is going on is is fake. The information passing that the, the members of the Nigerian army shot at on and protesters that are all fake. Uh, it's 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 he he's only trying to you know play on the sensibility of Nigerians. And it's an insult, and, and it's an insult on our collective on, responsibility on, 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 on and on intelligence yes, as a nation. As a nation. Yes. So uh, which which demands outright condemnation. It should be condemned. You know, mm -hmm. this is a country that should ordinarily should be governed. Uh, uh, in truth and uh, upholding the tenets of law, rule of law, and of course uh, the tenets of democracy. And of course, unfortunately, uh, we are not having that. It's then quite unfortunate. These protesters, some of them have lost their husband, their mm -hmm. wives, and all. do they have any remedy in law? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, just yesterday, uh, the, the, the speaker of uh, House the of House of Representatives. Yes, Femi Bajabia Mila. Yeah, Femi yes. Bajabia Mila made a statement uh, during uh, uh, the, the plenary, plenary that uh, that he's not going to uh, sign any budget, any 2021 budget that does not capture uh, compensation for uh, victims of uh, NSAS uh, protest. protest. So uh, for me, I I take it as uh, I I take it as uh, as. Uh, as a, a mark of responsibility on the part of uh, 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 the leaders and members of the... Uh, but don't be fast to come in. Yeah, Let it not be uh, one of their crew yes, promises. Yes, uh, crew promises, <laughs> yes. But, 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 yeah, yes, I, I've, said, I've said about it. But uh, this time around, I believe uh, they, they have to, they've learned that. They've seen, they've seen, they've seen that the people, uh, a united people can beat any, you know, any, any army in the world. Uh, with what has happened, with what has happened, and uh, with what I believe uh, uh, or, or happenstances in the near future, uh, Nigerian leaders, Nigerian leaders ought to know that uh, it's it's no more, it's no more, it's no more business as usual for them. The people, you know, consciousness, political consciousness, have uh, uh, tremendously risen, yes. and uh, it's 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 also good for our country's uh, democracy. It's it's good for it's it's good for. Uh, it's good for the development of the nation because the more people are aware, the more people are conscious of uh, uh, the, the the happenings in the, in the in the political environment they find themselves, and uh, try as much as possible to get involved. Uh, I believe uh, some of uh, these uh, incidences, uh, unfortunate incidences, who have been recording, uh, will, will be brought to Paris minimum. Thank you very much, Barrister Kelechi Wokog. Now, when you look at uh, uh, views of some of the stakeholders in the nation, lawyers like you and judges, and of course, I was listening to former Human Rights Chairman, uh, Professor Odin Kanlo. Most of them are advocating for um, a community or state policing that might help. Yeah. Uh, what's your view and your take on state policing? Um, don't you think that even if you grant that, that the state governor will still be doing what the federal is doing, mm -hmm. despite that uh, we see that uh, some of the southwest, mm -hmm. most of them have created what they call Amokutun sometime. Yeah. And uh, what's your take on that uh, police, uh, uh, state policing, yeah. or community policing? Uh, you know, uh, when, when, you, when you also look at uh, the demands of uh, these NSAS protesters, yes. you find out that... Uh, for some of for some persons who are saying that uh, uh, 
the 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 special anti-robbery squad has been disbanded yes. by as a result of the protest by Nigerians used by the federal government in response to their demands. Uh, it is not just the disbandment of the special anti-robbery squad that the youths of Nigeria are asking for. They're also calling for uh, total reform of the Nigerian police force. Uh, you agree with me also that uh, the current, as uh, constituted as it is, the current uh, uh, Nigerian police force is a product uh, of uh, British uh, colonial authority. And one may not be wrong to say that it's a colonial import. Mm. So if it is foreign, it doesn't meet with the demands of the people. So in a few minutes' time, are you saying that you support the, the my, 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 my take My take on that yes. is that uh, the state and community, po community policing yes. should be given the force of the law. It should be given the force of the law uh, so that people will be allowed to be part of uh, uh, their security system the security system of the nation. Won't the governors hijack it? It has not been good either the way it is. is. It has not been good either the way it is. But you, you also know that uh, uh, the police is in the exclusive uh, legislative list as captured uh, in the constitution, constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. So uh, most uh, state assemblies doesn't have authority to make legislations you know, that will have effects with regards to uh, the police as an institution in Nigeria except the National Assembly. Thank you very much. In one word, what's your last advice to the youths? Uh, uh, my, Especially these protesters. My, my, yes. my, what are you telling my, them? My, my words for Nigerian youths is to remain, uh, to remain focused, to, to, to remain relentless. Uh, this is a fight we must win. Uh, we, are, we are trying to secure the future of this nation, our future, and of course the future of uh, generations yet unborn. So we we'll remain focused and uh, try as much as possible to express, continue to express, continue to express our feelings, continue to express our opinions, continue to freely uh, mold opinions on issues of national importance, especially with intent to uh, uh, make progress and also uh, help in the development of our country thank you very much we should remain focused and it is a battle we must have to win we have heard it all from barrister kelechi we want to thank you so much for coming and i pray when next we call you your blood just to come yeah pleasure. thank you so My pleasure much always. thank you thank you very much mm -hmm. The primary aim and duty of the police is to protect lives and properties and not to take lives it is quite unfortunate that a security agency such as the Nigerian police that swore to uphold the law is not only violating the law but also taking lives. From our discussion so far, we can see that if both federal and state governments do their primary duties by providing the basic needs of citizens, such as protecting their lives and properties, creation of jobs and employment, access to quality education and health care system, there is no doubt that the protests will not only stop, but also Nigeria will be a better place to stay and live. Mm -hmm. Until we have gotten it right by applying the above suggested solutions, there will be no peace in Nigeria and we'll have no rest as a nation. This is where we draw the curtain on today's episode of the program, Justify Nigeria. Join us again on another fresh episode of the program, same time, same station. My name is Anna Zechenomso. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.